hai phần you need to unmute yourself i can't hear you oh it's just hey. us <laughs> how's it been going oh no there's a jen jen is here again um from gs jen from gs yeah and oh there is a leo is she a student leo tan i think leo tan correct he's a student and our speaker today should be Mohammed Najib Zahari. Mm, the speaker's not here yet. Hmm. So this is University of Nottingham, Malaysia. Let me see, where is everybody else? Hi, Jen. I thought that's Jocelyn's photo, isn't it? Because they were with me. Hi. Is this Jocelyn Jen? Jocelyn. Oh. Jocelyn. I thought you renamed the name. <laughs> nice seeing you again. Yeah. Oh, our speaker is here. Najib? Yes. Yeah. It's letting you to unmute him. Ah, okay. Hi. Yeah, hi. Najib here. Hi, I'm Crystal. I'm your moderator for these sessions. Okay. So we have about five more minutes. So yeah. we'll start in about five minutes. So I just to run you through with the format of our today's sessions, your yeah. presentation should take about 30 minutes. And then after that, we'll leave about 15 minutes for the students to ask any questions. Or, okay. And you're encouraged, I'll encourage the student to be more interactive. I feel that that <laughs> will be the best way you know, they can yeah. ask questions anytime and they could always prefer Q and A actually. Yes, yes. Yeah, especially when presentation at this time, right? Most of them they, they have enough presentation for the entire day. Yeah. <laughs> How many have you done today? No, no, I mean uh well, previously when I joined other school, right? Oh. So when you go end of the day session. Hmm. It's very obvious uh, the attention yeah. span and the <laughs> Yes, uh, that, that, that's why as much as possible, we, we put a slide, then we just keep talking and let them ask any questions straight away. Yep. Instead of we, we go through the slide and so on, because sometimes uh, the slide is not that catchy, you know, because the standard slide provided by the university are not that suitable sometimes for a student at IGCS level. So right. we, we need to remove a lot of things to customize to their requirement. Yeah, I see. So yeah. Leo is is Leo a student? Are you from five or A levels? Hi, yes, I'm a student. I'm from year twelve. From year, year twelve. 12 level. Okay, right. <clears throat> and Park, Park will just join us. Are you also in year twelve? It's okay if you're too shy to speak, you can type it in the chat box. <laughs> oh, did I scare him? Hmm. Okay. Let's give it another few more minutes. It's okay, Pat. So you're in year 12 as well? 
So we have two year 12 students. Right. So will you be sharing screen, Najib? Yes, of course. Okay. Let's just see if, if anyone else is coming in. Just give it one more minute. There is Mr. Liu. Hi, Mr. Liu. Okay, so the time is now five o'clock. So welcome to this uh, afternoon session for University of Nottingham, Malaysia. My name is Crystal. I'm your moderator for this session. And we have representative from uh, University of uh, Nottingham, Mr. Najib. And then uh, also Jocelyn from GES and Jen. Um, so without further ado, I'll let Mr. Najib take over and start his presentation. Okay. Uh, thank you, Crystal. And thank you also, Jocelyn, and uh, for on behalf of GES to University of Nottingham. Okay, let me have a short interview of myself. I'm Najib, uh, basically working with Nottingham for almost 10 years now. Okay. Uh, my background basically with the international office, but currently attached with the Malaysian Student Recruitment. So uh, my uh, main responsibility is basically to cover Sabah, Sarawak and Brunei. So Kuching is basically my hometown. So I'm basically from, from Kuching itself. So I'm quite familiar with the law school and have visited the school several times. Okay. So th this is not my first event with Lodge, by the way. Okay, so without further delay that I just share with you all a short presentation about us, okay, uh, who we are and basically what we offer for the student. Okay, so I believe that most of you are seeing the screen at the moment, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, I have introduced myself just now. I'm from the Malaysian Student Recruitment. So for this year, uh, for 20 year anniversary, the universities basically choose the following theme, our history or future. Okay. So I believe like some of you may be non us earlier, but some of you might totally new. Okay. To University of Nottingham in Malaysia itself. So we have been operated in Malaysia for the past 20 years. Okay. So we started in Malaysia in the year of 2000. Uh, by that time, we, we have a small campus in Jalan Conle, okay, uh, which we start with only three uh, schools, which is a business, computer science, and electrical electronic. And those three schools are basically celebrating 20th anniversary this year. Then we start and on several other schools year by year, okay. So by 2015, we moved to our current campus, which I'm having at my background at the moment. Okay, so we call it the Semenyeh campus itself. Okay, so this is the purpose-built campus. It's considered the only British complete campus uh, outside UK in Malaysia. So the reason why I'm stressing out the, the, the only UK campus outside UK in Malaysia is because uh, we are basically replicating our UK campus design okay, in Malaysia itself and also in China. So as you all can see in this photo map, basically the one that uh, the, the big building here, normally we call it trend building. So it is available across three campuses. So if you all visit us in the UK or even China, you will see a uh, trend building in front of the Nottingham leg itself. So there, there's not much difference in terms of our campus outlook. Okay, but of course in the UK, it look more gothic but in Malaysia, it's more modern. But if you look from the bird's eye view, then you will realize that we are basically resemble the crops circle, okay? So if you go into our uh, tour at Nottingham, the edu mine, basically you will have a 360 view. You can move from building to building, or even you, you, you can see some of the facilities 
uh, insight related to your studies. But of course, since our time are basically limited, we don't browse through the campus one by one. Okay, just uh, mention to you all that we do have a complete uh, faculty itself. We do have Faculty of Science and Engineering, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, uh, inclusive of business. Okay, uh, we do have a complete student association complete sports complex and also complete on-campus accommodation. So if you see at the far behind on this uh, aerial view, basically there is the Northern Student Village, okay? So this is considered the premium accommodation on campus itself, okay? Uh, we do have a few lot students studying with us at the moment, but across uh, several courses from engineering, psychology, business, and also most of them, they start it from the foundation, okay? So that's why uh, this is just the general map of us. So as I mentioned just now, we have the teaching facilities, the accommodation, student association, and the sports complex, okay? So students are actually quite lucky because they have a very uh, what you call this one, comprehensive student life on our campus. So it's not just focused about your study, okay, which most universities offered across in Malaysia, are mainly focused on academic, but for us, it focuses on every single thing, inclusive of your, what we call this soft skills development through club and societies and so on, okay. Okay, so just a simple sharing here. Uh, we are basically consistent top 100 universities in the world until now, okay, based on the QS uh, ranking. Uh, our 2021 ranking are basically uh, 99 at the moment. Uh, we are basically also five-star rating, Setara 2017, and we have been re-awarded Myra five-star recently, last March. So Myra Five Star is extremely important for those universities that are considered as a research-based universities, okay? And we do have <coughs> 5,000 students on campus at the moment coming from 85 over countries. So uh, of course, this is considered as an international setup campus. It's quite diverse to have 85 nationalities for uh, 5,000 students community. But across the world now, we already produce 300,000 alumni, okay, based on the current graduates. So uh, our community is actually quite diverse, okay. So the alumni of University of Nottingham in Malaysia is part of University of Nottingham in the UK and even China itself. So we are not separated. It's just location that in Malaysia, okay. Of course, as you all can see in our logo that we are also operated in the UK. We have four campuses in the UK and another one more campus in China. Okay, so as you can see also, uh, most of my slides keep highlighting the 20th anniversary because that is what we're celebrating this year. Okay, so on the left slide, you can see here there are several uh, uh, international accreditation that we have across the board. Okay, so not to worry because every single degree that you study with us are equivalent to what we have in the UK. Okay, so it have uh, the same weightage in terms of uh, ECCA, CIMA, CPA, ICAW, uh, Engineering Institution in the UK, Board of Pharmacy, uh, uh, Pharmacy, uh, what you call this one, uh, Psychology, and even Computer Science. So everything is following the UK standards. Okay, so I believe that most of the audience today are maybe from the year 10 and also from the year 12. Okay. However, my slide sharing mainly here for the post IGCSE. Okay. So the reason why we highlight the post IGCSE is because this is the main uh, pathway that we highlighted at the University of Nottingham. But of course, uh, this is not an ultimate. Uh, if you think that you want to go for A level, it's still okay. Okay. Uh, but foundation, it is always recommended for those who have. Uh, what you call this one, specific interest, okay? So if you already have a specific interest, you already develop specialization, then it is always good to go for foundation. Okay, as we can see in this slide at the moment, University of Nottingham basically offering four different foundations, which is arts and education, business management, engineering, and science. And the reason why we have separate foundation is we, we have 
a specific syllabus and it have a specific progression. So that's why I mentioned earlier, uh, if you have a specific interest, develop specific target, foundation is always good. However, if you are non-deciding, you, you're still having a mixture of several major, then I will still recommend that you all to go for A-level or any other international uh, examination, even like AUSMED, you know, uh, Ontario matriculation or any others. Uh, we do accept external foundation as well. So it's not necessary that it must come through our foundation. This is just a suggestion, okay? Uh, but of course, if you come from our foundation, you have a clear understanding about what you want to do next because the syllabus are tailor-made. Okay. Uh, but we do understand that most universities have a different entry requirement, especially for foundation. Okay. Uh, generally, in Malaysia, most of foundation require five credits. However, it is not possible for University of Nottingham because we require specific re uh, subject requirement. Uh, either the student coming from SPM or IGCSE itself. Uh, arts, basically, 5B is excluding general subject. Uh, foundation business, 5B inclusive of maths, excluding religious or moral. Uh, foundation in science, 1A in maths, and 4B inclusive uh, physics or chemistry. Uh, sorry, foundation in engineering, uh, basically 1A in maths, and 4B inclusive physics. Uh, and recommended if the student take at maths as well. Okay, and for foundation in science, okay, sorry, there is a confusion here. It's basically five Bs, one maths and two science subject. So it can be biochemistry, physics. Biochemistry, physics depend on the, the subject that they want to pursue. But in terms of English requirement, it is similar across the board. First language of C and uh, second language of B, or if it is SPM, then it will be B+. Plus. It depends on the student's background. So from here, the student already understand that we, we are quite different in terms of our entry requirement. Definitely, uh, for our undergraduate, we are much more strict in terms of our entry requirement as well. But of course, uh, I'm not highlighting the undergraduate entry requirement here. Generally, across the board, most courses require 3B A-level. Uh, exceptional special courses like m -farm Pharmacy require a specific 1A and 2B. Okay, so the rest across the board, 3B is the general entry requirement if the student are coming from the A-level background. Okay, so uh, of course, if you know this information in advance, it is much easier for you to get ready, but if you already uh, complete your IGCSE, uh, then it depends on you. If you didn't fulfill the direct entry requirement for now, no, no problem. You can go for A-level or any other foundation. If you're still interested to join Nottingham, then you can reapply for degree. Okay, so, so it's, it's not over yet. Uh, because like some students, they always thought if they didn't fulfill the SPM and IGCSE, okay, that's it. Uh, they, they need to forget about Nottingham. No, uh, it's actually not uh, that way. Uh, the, the best possible way is you can pursue foundation somewhere else, but of course you need to fulfill specific entry requirement for our degree. In general, if it is external foundation, normally we are looking into 3.33 CGPA or 75% average. We do understand it sounds higher, but that is our standards at the moment. So the one that having percentage is almost like maybe like MAFI, because MAFI, they, re, they report the final result in percentage. So MAFI student, we require minimum 75%, but if they're looking for m -farm pharmacy, then we are looking into 80% per subject, okay? So in terms of tuition fee for foundation, arts and business are quite similar. It's 7,800 per semester or 23,400 for a year. Uh, engineering foundation is 9,500 or 28,500 or science foundation 9,000 or 27,000 in total for one year. So one year is three semesters. Of course, again here, I do not highlight the tuition fee for undergraduate because there are too much variation. Okay, but of course, the student can visit directly our university website for further details on the tuition fee. Uh, but here, I would like to share some of the progression pathway 
for the specific foundation background. So for example, if the student asked me, I wanted to do any of the degree in the following list, then the best foundation to join are basically foundation in arts and education. Okay. So from the education, uh, English, international communication, international relation, liberal arts. So all these courses, uh, student may come from foundation in arts and education. Okay. But if they wanted to go slightly more maths driven, which is normally involve business and economics, or even applied psychology, the most recommended foundation is always foundation in business and management. We do separate uh, business, economic, and applied psychology to a different pathway because uh, this, uh, have, this program requires maths element. Okay? So as we can see here, most of our degree titles are BSc compared to the previous listing, everything is BA. So BA and BSc, of course, it have a different uh, teaching requirement. BA normally qualitative methods, BSc normally quantitative heavy driven, which is student need to have a very good maths background. And just for a simple sharing, uh, for example, our finance accounting management, which is commonly known as accounting program in other university, uh, more than 50% of our students are basically science-based students. So they are not really from the arts or the business stream in the school. They are science students. When they join these courses, which is maths driven or quantitative driven, they really enjoy the teaching and they score very well. That's why at the end of the journey, most of them score second upper and also first class honors. So it's not because the subject is easy, but because their background, their science background helped them a lot to understand and master the studies very well. So that, that's why if the students not really into maths driven program, then do not sign up for anything in this following list, but go for the arts driven program. So it might be different for other institutions, but the, this, this suggestion is only applicable if they are student into the home requirement. Okay? And after that, we have foundation in engineering progression. Okay? This technology, Foundation engineering is only for those who really interested to become an engineer. Other than this, do not sign up for foundation engineering. Uh, because don't torture yourself to go to, into a heavy syllabus to, to go for a science program. Okay? So if you're really interested in science, go straight away into our foundation in science because they have a specific pathway. The reason why I say foundation engineering is slightly difficult compared to science because uh, if you look into the syllabus, foundation engineering have 33% maths, 33% physics, and 33% uh, engineering skills. Okay, so it is uh, quite different in terms of the subject orientation. Okay, alternatively for foundation in science students, so they have uh, streaming option okay so for, for other foundation they don't really have streaming so why why we call it streaming so in foundation in science we will divert the student in three different program in the semester two and semester three uh, sorry in the, the final so for example if the student join us in april or june intake uh, the streaming will be in uh, January, which is finished by April, or if they are September intake student, their streaming is also January because January is our streaming syllabus. Mean the student need to decide either they are going into bio driven, psychology driven, or mathematic computer science driven. Okay, so for example, if the student interested to do mathematics or considering all computer science related subject, what happened is they need to undergo 40 credit maths. But if they are not really interested in maths, but they are bio driven, then they need to go for bio streaming, which they need to complete 40 credit biology and 40 credit chemistry. That's why we call it bio driven. And 
for psychology students, then they have the psychology driven subject. So we, we have a specific subject. So we don't have general foundation in science. So again, as I mentioned earlier, foundation at Nottingham is good if you have a specific interest. Okay, so just in case if you all confused, not to worry, you all can contact me straight away or any of representative or even GES directly, they can do the mapping with you. Okay, uh, do not make a mistake because uh, our program are not that versatile. So you don't simply join one foundation to go to other foundation. It doesn't really work that, that versatile. It's like foundation in uh, engineering, worst case scenario, we still allow the student to proceed into computer science related subject because of foundation engineering are very heavy in terms of maths. Okay, I think there's somebody, oh, okay. So just in sharing the phone number there. So I, I think it's quite clear now that uh, different foundation have different progression requirement. Okay, up to this presentation, we have any question from the students or even from the teachers? Is there any questions for Mr. Najib? I understand we have a mixed crowd of uh, IG and also A-level student. Maybe uh, for IG student, you have any question about the foundation first? Really? No. Okay, maybe you could carry on with your presentation. Maybe the questions will come later on. Oh, if you all look into this uh, science progression, mm -hmm. our world top ranking program in this leading, which is basically Masters of Pharmacy, uh, which is currently ranking number seven in the world based on QS subject ranking, and we are consistent top 10 in the world. Okay. So uh, this program requires a very strict entry requirement from the foundation. So for example, for any other courses at University of Nottingham, you're only required to score 40% marks per subject. Okay, however, if the students are doing uh, M Farm Pharmacy, we will double check the entry requirement at IGCSE or SPM level. Plus, at foundation level, they are required to score minimum marks of 65% average plus 60% 60 for all chemistry modules. So the m -Farm pharmacy, they are quite strict in terms of the entry requirement, even for internal students. But for external, uh, we require you to score minimum of 1A and 2B plus interview. If you are internal student, then there is no interview for the subject. Uh, this is also quite a common question because most of students are interested to know is there any scholarship or financial aids available at the University of Nottingham if they're coming from IG, SPM or even for undergraduate related studies. Okay, so if you are currently studying IGCSE, then you can focus on the left column here which is about IG. 7A, any subject, you will get a 25% of the total tuition fee foundation. Or if the student are from SPM background, then it is 8A inclusive A minus any subject as well. Okay, so this is we call it high achiever for foundation. However, if the students are from A level, then they are focusing on the right side, which is the high achiever for undergraduate. The students are required to score minimum of 3A, excluding general subject. So, for example, if the student wanted to apply for pharmacy, the 3A normally uh, chemistry, biology, maths, or those who are going for engineering, maybe maths, physics, chemistry, or even maths, advanced maths, physics, because the subject must be related to the subject itself. Okay. Uh, then, other than the 25% uh, discount for the high achiever, we do also uh, offering the alumni or family scholarship, for example. If you, you your brother or your sister is currently studying at Nottingham, then you will get at least 10% tuition fee deduction for your year one. So for example, uh, you, you want to join our engineering year one this year and your brother are already finally engineering also. So when you register, very simple, just uh, prove by your 
birth certificate, then we will deduct you 10% discount. As simple as that. There's no actually uh, application required for that. Okay. But if the students are looking into a higher quantum, we do offer sports and arts scholarship. Okay. Uh, sports and arts scholarship cover 50 to 75%, depends on level. If the students uh, are representing at national level, 50%, international level, 75%. Okay, so this is excluding any badminton scholarship, which is also uh, a kind of sports scholarship, but we have specific uh, for badminton scholarship. Okay, so this sports is covering the rest of the sports, excluding the specific uh, badminton that we currently offer to the student uh, uh, in Malaysia. Okay, uh, because most of the one who secure our badminton scholarship are Malaysian national players, okay? So we do have few national players on campus, uh, not only for badminton, several others inclusive, inclusive of gymnastics as well, okay? Uh, other than that, we do also provide a selected 100% scholarship in terms of value uh, to Sinchu Daily and also our Star Education Fund. Uh, but this information is only relevant for those who are applying with A level, excluding foundation studies. Okay, so uh, the student can check uh, it in our local newspaper normally in the month of March. Okay, so if the student currently pursuing A level, then you need to check for this. But of course, if you are applying for September 2020, then this information is already obsolete for you. Okay. So it depends on your situation. If you are still enrolled in A-level, then this information is still valid. Okay? And then you might be the, uh, the one who are possible to apply next year. Uh, other than that, Tinggi Foundation also uh, quite supportive to University of Nottingham. They have basically increased the number of awards each year. Uh, sometimes they give us up to five awards yearly basis that cover 50% of the tuition fee. Uh, the requirement for Tinggi Foundation is you need to be existing student at the moment of application. Mean you can only apply once you officially register on campus. So for example, if you want to apply for this year, then you need to register first in September 2020. Then as long as your courses is in the listing, you may apply. But of course, they have series of interview, okay? Which uh, the, the panel will decide who will be the final five students and uh, the, they will get the 50% tuition fee covered. Uh, however, I do understand that the Tinggi Foundation have a specific requirement like any other scholars. Uh, Tinggi Foundation receiver required to score 60% average same early every semester. Okay, so they, they cannot score lower than 60%. That is the standard requirement. And there is a lot of scholarship will be released year, year to year basis through our sponsorship office. Uh, so for example, like the Dell, Intel, Bank Negara, Maybank, CIMB, uh, these people normally giving a lot of scholarship for current students and also new students. So the student can check the sponsorship office from time to time. Or if you are a new Applicant, most of the time in Malaysia, generally March, April is the peak time for you to check for scholarship. Okay, so in case if you are still enrolled in year 11 or you are currently year 12 student, then you still have that opportunity for uh, 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 September 2021 or April 2021 for the foundation. Okay. Uh, but just in case if the student interested to know some information about PTPTM, uh, University of Nottingham are quite lucky. We are the only British universities at the moment which are covered by PTPTM loan because we are already 20 years in Malaysia. However, please take note that our PTPTM loan are not as good as other private institution. Okay, because we are foreign campus, we are not under the... the private institution category, the government only agreed to give the following uh, amount to the applicant. So for example, uh, they will, it, it depends on the family income. They normally uh, divide you into B40 and 40 T20. Uh, so the amount is as being shown here. So for example, 
just in case if you're applying for engineering program, if you're coming under top 20, it's only 7,000. If it's non-science, 6,800. If it's pharmacy related or health science, then 8,500. So I mean that is the maximum amount that you will get yearly basis other than EPF and any others. Okay, uh, of course this information is quite different compared to what the student normally got from other uh, Malaysian institution, which normally the PTPN coverage is actually quite extensive. Okay, uh, but please take note, uh, due to our status, uh, British universities, the coverage is much lower. Okay. Uh, of course, as I mentioned just now, uh, we are complete campus universities. Uh, we do offer accommodation uh, across three universities. We call our accommodation are basically halls. Okay, so in Malaysia, all the halls are basically named by the island that is available in Malaysia. That's why you can see the word Tioman, Langkawi, Redang, Pangkor, Sipadan, and so on, so on. This is all, uh, but there is no Borneo hall. Uh, at Nottingham, okay, maybe it's too huge for them. Okay, so the rental will be from 455 to 750, depends on the student budget. Uh, but trust me, for Klang Valley location, 750 maximum is actually quite cheap for a con room. Okay, so because most of our room are basically single, so the 2400 room are uh, mainly single and very limited sharing. Okay. So the room will be as follow. So from the 455 to the 750. Uh, everything subject to the student budget, subject to student preferences, because like some students, they are quite familiar with Nottingham, so they stay off campus straight away. But normally for Sabah and Sarawak students, for first year, parents always prefer the children to stay on campus because this is your first time uh, in Klang Valley especially, right? So even we are located in Semenye. So parents always prefer the children to stay on campus for the first year. Subsequent year, you can stay off campus, okay? And just in case, if you have a master chef in yourself, uh, you may request to stay in a hostel that have a kitchen facilities. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the kitchen are not available if you're staying in the 750 because that is a deluxe environment. Uh, deluxe environment, no cooking allowed, but non-deluxe, yes, you can cook. Uh, actually, it's quite common, okay, uh, especially among international students. International parents normally love to cook for large crowd. They normally cook in a large pot and they will invite like the whole wing for a feast. It's quite common and they observe it uh, every semester on campus, which is actually quite unique, okay. And the... The life on campus is actually quite, I can say, uh, impressive because we do have a lot of eatery on campus itself with a lot of, uh, a uh, what you call this one, uh, facilities for the student. Okay, so if you look into these photos, what happened is every Tuesday is a Pasar Malam Day. Okay, because we are located in Malaysia, right? We still want to have that culture to be experienced by our international campus without having any safety and security or even food poison issue. Okay, so we select a very hygienic operator which we already received the profile in advance, though they are just Pasamalam operator. And we have food sampling, we know that it will not harm our student once the student consume the food. So it is actually quite interesting. Uh, even staff like myself, we do enjoy our Pasar Malam so much, okay? So everybody are waiting for Tuesday every week. And uh, alternatively, on Thursday, we have the food truck day, okay? So students are basically not uh, stuck with the, the uh, we call this one, in-house food operator. They have a lot of options. And the club societies normally run food trucks sometimes the whole weeks or even the whole month. Students have a lot of options, so not to worry about that. Alternatively, uh, we do organize a Tesco trip every evening from campus. Or students can go straight to Tesco Kajang almost every hour. <laughs> so that is how convenient the, the students on our campus. Okay. Uh, of course, we do have 7-Eleven on campus. So we do have one 7-Eleven and two My News outlet. So you just imagine for a small campus, we basically have 
four, uh, what you call this groceries outlet. One Seven Eleven, two My News, and one Oasis. Okay. And in terms of food option, it is quite diverse. You will have from Arabic, Chinese, Fusion, Japanese. You just name it, it is quite extensive. But of course, the most famous one is the Chinese food. It's, it's the most healthy option is available on campus itself. Uh, we have recently closed uh, secret recipe after, 60, uh, after six years operation on campus. Okay. We are waiting for a new operator to operate on campus. Hopefully by this September, there will be a new operator replacing secret recipe. So for now, we, we have no longer the red velvet supplier on campus like previously. But not to worry, there is a secret recipe in Semenye and also Pekan Semenye. Uh, doesn't mean you don't have access and all. Uh, but of course, please be ready. We don't really have uh, what you call this Starbucks on campus. Okay. Uh, the one we have on campus is only the Nestle uh, coffee station. Okay. Uh, and because we have a lot of British students, we do have Subway on campus itself because most of our British students are on bread diet. Okay. And as a typical Malaysian, we do have, we love mama food. Mama food are operated 24 hours on campus. So they, they are like typical mama shop. That's why they, they operate 24 hours on campus. So I mean, you need not to worry about being hungry on campus because uh, either you have the mama or you even you have the frozen food from McD and, uh, sorry, from, from 7E and also my news uh, operator, okay? And we do have a sports complex, indoor and outdoor. Of course, the indoor badminton will be the most dominant one. Okay. So as that is our main uh, sports that we champion yearly basis. Okay. For your information, we are the only universities in the world that organize the tri-campus games. Students from Malaysia, China and UK basically flying to each campus yearly basis. Okay. This is quite unique. And a lot of students are basically using this grant to travel freely across campuses. Some students manage to travel up to three times during their study period, as long as you are good in that specific sport. Okay. So uh, our sports facilities inclusive night support. So you need not to worry. You are not only sporting during the daytime. Okay. We do understand like some courses like engineering, your time might be packed. Uh, your last class maybe finish at 5.30 and you want to have a gym or any other sports at night, no problem, we do support night facilities, okay? Uh, but it depends on student, uh, our gym also quite specific, we have cardio, non-cardio, so it, it's quite unique in terms of the student's experience, okay? Uh, here, you, you will have a lot of link which the student can browse uh, afterwards if they wanted to check more about the universities, okay? So basically, this is a simple introduction about uh, who we are for the past 20 years, okay? So like myself, I basically served three different universities. I start my career with UCM, which is government uni, and I work with the private universities, and now I'm serving the uh, foreign campus. I found the student experience are quite different, okay? Uh, maybe be first because we are British institutions and everything is following the British standards. Uh, that is what I can assure to all students. Uh, in terms of student life, not to worry, our timetable are quite flexible. Class only running from 9 to 5.30. Okay, so it's 9 to 5.30 randomly. And if you ask me uh, about the current situation, uh, based on the last memo provided yesterday, we will resume face-to-face -face classes after 5th of October. So just in case if you are an applicant for this year, uh, this is the good news for you. We will resume face-to-face -face teaching on 5th of October. Yeah, it's what I can share for time being. All right, thank you, Najib. Um, so now we're open to our participants and students. Is there any questions for uh, Najib and also GES? Oops. 
Uh, hi, yes, I have a question. Is this yeah. Liu? Yes. Okay. Yep, so it's for uh, Mr. Najib. Um, okay. So earlier you talked about there being society and clubs. So can you like give a brief insight as to like okay. what society and clubs you have? Yeah. Okay, so for 5,000 community, at the moment we have a very little club numbers on campus. Okay. As of now, we have only 75 club and society operate on our campus. The reason why I say it's still a very small amount because we're comparing ourselves to our UK, which they have nearly 230 club and societies. However, we do understand uh, 75 is considered a very good amount. Okay, uh, It is a mixture of uh, sports best, academic best, faculty best, special interests, and not necessarily it's cost related. So for example, when I say it's not cost related, uh, we do have music society, dance society. So even we're not offering any music degree or dancing related, we do have uh, those and they are among the richest club on campus. Music society and Chinese cultural are considered top one and top two. They are quite rich. Yeah, but if you have related to special interests, of course, there's a lot of special interest club and societies. Uh, of course, a nature's club, uh, sports related, or even martial art related. We, we do have various options for students. And for those who like uh, extreme sport like hiking, of course, there is also hiking clubs on campus because as we are situated in Klang Valley, uh, we are surrounded by uh, hiking uh, places, you know, so it is quite enjoyable. And most of the students are quite active, so island trips are quite common and organized almost every semester. Uh, it depends because like some courses, island trip is compulsory. So for example, if you're studying environmental science, staying in Tioman for two weeks is compulsory <laughs> because it's part of the subject. But for other students, uh, Tioman is maybe just like a weekend or distress activity before exam or even to Langkawi, to Penang and so on. Uh, sometimes they even organize a trip to Singapore. Yeah, because uh, our students are not limited to campus activity. They, they are quite uh, talented, they are very versatile, they are very good in their event management. Uh, they organize up to international levels event as well, inclusive TEDx. Yeah. And of course, a student uh, who study international relations, they do organize uh, mini United Nations, MUN. Uh, of course, University of Nottingham are quite famous with the mini United Nations activities because of it is international student driven activities. Most of our international students are ex-MUN, so they really know how to handle MUN very well. Okay. Any more questions for Mr. Najib? Anyone interested about exchange or transfer? Just in case, if no one... Uh, Twinning program, you mean, to go to your other campus in China and UK? Yeah, uh, but for us, we don't really call it twinning. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the concepts are quite different if you compare to other universities. This mm -hmm. exchange and transfer at University of Nottingham is not guaranteed. Okay. It's available for selected courses. It's a quota driven. Oh. Ranking during application. So, for example, certain courses they have very limited quota. Example, transfer psychology have only one seat. Do I do I need to decide this when I enroll during first no, year, no, no. or I can decide later on during? Uh, I mean, second? if if you really want to end up your study in Nottingham, think twice because we cannot guarantee that you can secure that top one. Oh. Yeah, so this is some of the issues that is normally the student facing before they sign up for us. A business school is only five seats. So you five out of few hundred business students. Generally, roughly, we have only five seats, excluding mechatronic. 
Exchange is also available. Again, it is a very limited seats driven. So everything is subject to how strong your academic performance. And most courses require minimum of 60%, but some high ranking courses like engineering might require higher achieve, uh, high achiever level, which I'm talking here about 85% average. Wow. To be selected. Yeah, just in case if you know anyone from University of Nottingham, have spent their time in UK, China, or any other institution, mm. and say most likely they, they are graduating with at least second upper or first class honours. So competitive. Yeah, because um, a lot of students actually confuse us with our published entry requirement. Oh, okay. So because the students said, but your university doesn't publish straight A for your entry requirement. I said, mm. We don't publish straight A for the entry requirement, but the program will be signed up by, by a lot of straight A. So there will be three courses have a lot of straight A, mainly pharmacy, mm -hmm. chemical, engin chemical engineering, mechanical engineering. So just in case any of the students who are listening to this presentation today, please take note, if you're applying for these three courses, you need to bear in mind, you will have a lot of people like yourself in the pop program example if you manage to score three a star there will be so many like yourself replicating in that process so they make your your competition become very tough and as i mentioned earlier please take note 50 percent of our accounting students are ex science classes okay so science students generally they are very strong in maths Accounting is like their food. <laughs> they, they can score 75%, 80% easily. So this create the difference among our students. Yeah. Right. Uh, if you read, if the student really looking into a very competitive place to study, yes, you are looking into one of it. And I can say that we are very competitive. Yeah, because a lot of students actually come to our campus and ask that question. Is your study here very competitive or not? Yes, we are highly competitive. But competitive here is in a healthy way. Okay, So we, we are not driving you to be crazy just to score a high marks. But we, we are basically encourage you to express yourself in a much proper way. And one good thing which I can observe in a British institution compared in other institutions which I have served previously is the mental health support and the disability of learners. Okay, so this is something quite unique actually, which I observe at Nottingham. Okay, so we do have full blind student on campus. Okay, so any student with any disability, we will full support as long as we endorse the form. So mean. If we accept the blind student, mean we will support him or her until they graduate. Or if we accept any dyslexia, dyslexia, or any types of uh, learning disabilities, uh, they, they, they are quite lucky because dyslexia, dyslexia students get even a custom printout uh, exam paper. So they are not using the typical exam paper like normal students because they, their reading abilities are different. Uh, the assignment deadline is tailor-made for the learning disabilities requirement. So we, we custom-made the how we handle the students. So we, we cannot treat you equally by using giving you same time frame, same assignment deadline because learning disability is different from one student to one student. So uh, this is something quite unique. And if you look into our general uh, overview just now. Uh, our building is actually not that high. We normally have e either uh, two floor or even three floor only on campus. Okay, the reason is because we are uh, OKU friendly. Every building have a lift access because uh, we do have a lot of students with the motorized wheelchair on campus. So this is something actually quite amazing. When I first joined Nottingham almost ten years ago. I, I never seen any campus that have a lot of motorized people on wheelchair moving around freely. But at Nottingham, this is actually a common view on campus. Right. 
Yeah, because the community do support. Uh, and every building we have uh, what we call this one, uh, disability support officer. Uh, and every building, every office, we also have uh, here first aider. For example, I'm also a trained first aider. So my license valid for the past six years. So we need to ensure at any time there is an emergency, there is a staff who are able to handle student or assist another needy student. So you see how extensive the university think about the student support. So this is what I really like. Not, not because I'm working with Nottingham, I mentioned this, but uh, I didn't really observe this when I worked in other institutions previously. Yeah, so that is what I can assure students. And just in case if you all are worried about what happened after your graduation, for your information, our graduate advisory, uh, our career advisory service are currently ranking number one in Malaysia. Okay, so our graduate employment is 92% average for, for the first six months. And our world ranking for graduate employment are 62 in the world. Our graduate employment in the UK, we are uh, now number six in the UK. Number five are Cambridge, number 10 are Oxford. So we think it is okay, right? To be number six between Cambridge and Oxford, right? Yeah, but just in case if you puzzle, who is number one? Number one, uh, Manchester. Ah. <laughs> yeah, Manchester are quite consistent in terms of their graduate employment. Though their ranking in the UK not that high, the graduate employment is always the top three. So Nottingham, uh, our best ranking is only top two back in 2016. Yeah, so I mean, for those who are really looking into career in the UK, yeah, you know, you need not to worry because you are looking into the correct university, which having you giving you a proper access for a career in the UK. Okay, but at the moment, our largest group that are serving the UK market at the moment is mainly pharmacy. Pharmacy. Uh, because our pharmacy student also are considering one of the highest paid in the industries. Okay, so they are highly paid even for the first six months or even after three years. So I basically met several uh, alumni, which uh, they visit campus and share the information with students. They also agree all information published by the UK uh, authorities are basically reflecting the real income that received by Malaysian in the UK market. Yeah. Right. So thank you so much, Mr. Najib, for a very comprehensive uh, presentation on uh, University of Nottingham. This is new yeah. to me. I have friends who have attended Nottingham University of Nottingham as well. Okay. Yeah, but um, okay. I think I I think one of them uh, one of them went straight to UK one, and the other uh -huh. one actually did twin, I think did a transfer that went okay. through your your campus. So is In there any more questions? Sorry. Uh, hello. Also, I did advise one student from Lodge going for our psychology. Mm. Uh, she, she's from A level. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Met, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm Jen Najib. Sorry for yeah. the interruption. But I just want to check with you regarding just now what you mentioned about the quarters are uh, like transferring to your UK campus. Uh -huh. uh, if if let's say the uh, the student enrolled in the Malaysia campus. After two years later, they decided to go to UK. Campus. Okay, may I know for which courses, sir? Let's say engineering. Uh, any specific engineering because the information are tailor per program. Oh, let's say civil. Uh, civil, okay. For civil engineering, uh, our standard quota published at the moment is five seats for each year. Mean uh, five seats for year two, five seats for year three, five seats for year four. Any additional will be updated through international office. So, so this means uh, if the five quarters is full, the student is not able to get transferred to your UK. Yeah. Campus. So what happened? Uh, I'm basically one of the transfer officer in the early days. I'm doing the intercampus transfer from 2011 up to 2014. Uh, there is a specific uh, movement, especially for two programs, uh, civil engineering and chemical engineering. So what happened is, uh, those students who 
with average of 80% marks that fell to transfer to the UK, they are basically being accepted by Birmingham and several other institutions directly into the year three and year four because they having average of 80%, which is higher than the, the internal requirement for MENG progression. But I didn't observe any student lower than that average successfully transfer out. Uh, chemical engineering, the quota is even worse. Sometimes it's only one per year for transfer. So if we compare to EE, civil or mechanical five seats each year, chemical is actually one of the worst quota. They, they are one year, uh, we have only one quota for transfer, right? It have created a very uh, big issue on campus. Uh, because a student misunderstood that, they thought that I'm controlling the quota. I said I have no issue on the quota. Quota is controlled 100% by the UK authorities. Yeah, so I mean, if you really uh, wanted to send your son or your daughter to study with us and focusing on civil engineering, the chances is still there. But please study very hard to score highest possible mark during the first or the second year. So when I say highest possible marks for, in, for civil engineering, I'm looking at least 80%. But if it's chemical, mechanical, EE, then I'm looking into 85% average. Uh, anything lower than that, chances will be quite slim. Uh, I'm very sorry, we, we do understand people are really interested about transnational education, unfortunately, we, we are not able to do that. And th there's one specific reason which I can share with all students and parents here. Uh, due to our high graduate employment ranking in the UK, uh, basically uh, most UK students are comfortable to select us in their top five application. So you can say that uh, the UK market are focusing to this top 10 uh, graduate employment instead of just focusing on the general ranking. Yes, Nottingham are not top 20, uh, Manchester are not top 20, but for graduate employment, which is what happened after you graduate, which is furthermore important for, for student and parent, they are focused to follow graduate ranking and not following university's ranking alone. Yeah. So that means if we are not able to get uh, get in halfway to, to the UK campus, that means we have to finish the degree and then yes. during the master's uh, uh, Alternatively, students may opt for exchange. Exchange, we do offer more seats and we do offer in several other institutions as well. So for example, Civil engineering also can apply for uh, Birmingham universities or even for Glasgow universities. They do, they do have around 10 seats each year on top of our UK quota. So roughly you can say that it will be around 15 or 20 seats for Exchange UK, Nottingham. Uh, maybe around 10 at Birmingham and maybe around 10 at Glasgow, roughly. Uh, but again, depends, the information are changing quite rapid. So the quota will be updated by our international office yearly basis. Chances is still there, but maybe not under transfer, at least under exchange. However, there are some students uh, quite adventurous. What they do, first year Malaysia, second year UK exchange, third year Malaysia, final year, year four transfer. So why I say they are quite smart because they're only paying one year British pound fee and three years Malaysian ringgit. Oh, yeah. okay. And finally, <laughs> convo in UK. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, but that one is only applicable if you are consistent top student. Mean you know you can score very well in year one, year two, year three. Because some students, they, they are quite maintenance in terms of their academic achievement. And I can proudly say there's a lot of Sabah and Sarawak students actually successfully transferred to the UK. So it's, it's not something new. 
Uh, for civil engineering, most of the quota is fulfilled by Sabah and Sarawak. Hmm. Oh, okay. That's good yeah. to know. Uh, I can share because because I'm I'm the 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 previous intercampus transfer exchange and transfer person. Right. Okay. So does that answer your question, Mr. Liu? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Is there any more questions from the students? Please feel free to get in touch with uh, GES, uh, Jocelyn and Jen. They published their contact number in the chat. And any more questions? Um... Okay, uh, just in case if the parent or the student or even teachers wanted to text or WhatsApp me directly, mm. I forgot to show the final slide just now. Mm. Uh, basically, my number uh, published in the slide. Sorry. Here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, I always prefer text instead of a voice call. The main reason is because I'm not really sitting in the work station all of the time. Uh, because of our peak season consultation is keep going. Mm -hmm. and whenever I free, I normally reply the WhatsApp or even the uh, emails. Okay. Uh, it can be from the teachers, student, or even parent. Uh, alternatively, student can contact directly GES. They are our official representative in teaching. And for now, I'm not traveling to Sabah or Sarawak due to COVID. Okay. So uh, I, I'm also miss my two raya this year. Compared to previously, I normally return to Kuching like six times a year, but this year zero. <laughs> so I miss Kuching a lot. Don't worry, you can come, but you just need to go into quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's no other questions for Mr. Najib, uh, I'll wrap up the sessions. So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Najib, for joining us. Thank you so yeah. much for your presentation. Any more questions, feel free to contact Mr. Najib directly or GES, Jocelyn and Jen. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you, everyone. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Okay, bye.